We begin now at the top of Daf Beis Amud Aleph and Maseches Megillah. This is Megillah Daf Two A. The Mishnah says Megillah Nikras Biyud Aleph Biyud Beis Biyud Gimel Biyud Dalid Betesvav. The Megillah can be read on the eleventh, the twelfth, the thirteenth, the fourteenth, or the fifteenth of Ador. Lo Pachos Velo Yoser can't be less, can't be more. Meaning it can't be before the eleventh. It cannot be after the fifteenth. And the Mishnah continues, If you have cities that are surrounded by walls from the days of Yoshua ben Nun, Korin Betazvav, they read the Megillah on the 15th of Adar. If you have villages or you have large cities, again, these are unwalled cities, Korin Biyodalid, they read on the 14th of Adar. However, in the villages, they would read early to the Yom Hakanisa, that's the day of gathering, that refers to the Monday and Thursday, that's before the 14th. And the Mishnah continues, Ketzad how so? Cholios Yudalid, let's say the 14th falls out, Besheni. Let's say the 14th of Adar falls out on Monday. So then, Kfarim Vayaros Kedolos, Korin Bo Vayom. So the villages and the large cities that are unwalled, they read on that day, because again, it's already Monday. You don't have to move to a Monday or Thursday. Umukafas Choma Lamachar, and those, those cities that are surrounded by a wall from the days of Yoshua Ben they're going to read the next day, they're going to read on the 15th of Adar. Let's say you have a situation where the 14th of Adar falls out on Tuesday or Wednesday. So so the villages are going to read earlier the Monday before. And the larger cities, they're going to read on the day that Yodalit falls out. And again, the cities that are surrounded by a wall, they're going to read the next day on the 15th. Let's say the 14th falls out on Thursday. So the villages and the large cities will read on that day. And again, the cities that are surrounded by a wall, they're going to read the next day on the 15th. Cholios Erev Shabbos, let's say Purim falls out on Friday. Kfarim Makdimin Liyom HaKnisa, the villages will read again on Thursday, the day before. Vayoros Kedolos Umukafos Choma, Korn Bayom. Now in this situation, those that are surrounded by a wall are not going to read on the 15th, because of the 15th and Shabbos. So the large cities and the cities that are surrounded by a wall, those are, they are both going to read on the 14th on Friday. And the Mishnah continues, Cholios B'Shabbos, let's say Purim falls out on Shabbos. Kifarim Vayoros Kedolos Makdimin V'Korin Liyom HaKnisa. So again, you don't read it on Shabbos. The villages and the larger cities, they're going to read earlier to the Yom HaKnisa. They're going to read on the Thursday before. Umukafas Chomolamachar, those surrounded by a wall, will read the next day on Sunday, on the 15th. Cholios Achar HaShabbos, finally the Mishnah says, let's say the 14th falls out after Shabbos, meaning on Sunday. Kfarim Makdim and Liyom HaKnisa, once again, the villages will read earlier to the Yom HaKnisa. They'll read on the Thursday before. Vayoros Kedolos Korin Bobayom, the larger cities will read on that on that day, meaning the 14th on Sunday. Umukafas Chomolamachar, and the ones that are surrounded by a wall, they'll read the next day on the 15th on Monday. And we'll take a look at Rashi over here. Elisha Kfarim Makdim and Liyom HaKnisa. Kilomar, what it means to say is as follows. Meachar Sha Mukaf and Korin Betezvav, Eshein Mukaf and Korin Biedalit. If the city is surrounded by walls, they read on the 15th, and the other cities read on the 14th. Harei HaKol Bechlal, haven't we included everything? Suhechi Mashkach, Yud Aleph, Yud Beis, Yud Gimel. How are you ever having a situation of reading on the 11th, 12th, or the 13th? Elisha Kfarim, but what it means is, is that the small villages, Nosnu Lahen Chachomim Rishos, the Chachomim gave them permission, Lahaktim Kriyosu Liyom HaKnisa, that they can read a little early on the Yom HaKnisa, on the gathering day. Yom Sheni B'Shavish, Elifnei Yud Aleph, Ocham that's either the Monday or the Thursday before the 14th. Shu Yom Knisa, that is the day of gathering in what way? Shakvar Miskansin Layars, because on those days the people who lived in the villages, they would gather in the large cities. La Mishpat for judgment, Lafishebate Din and Yoshvin by Yaros Bishenu Vachamishi, because the Bezdin used to sit in the larger cities on Mondays and Thursdays. So that was the day they were traveling anyway, on Mondays and Thursdays, traveling anyway to the cities. Kitakona Sezra, that's part of the Takona Sezra. Vakvarim Ainon Bikin Likros, and in the villages there were not many many experts who knew how to read. So it was necessary that someone from the larger city would need to read for them. The Chachamim did not want to bother them that they have to come on the 14th. You have times when it's the 13th, the 11th, it could be on different days, and therefore they're allowed to read when they come into the big cities on the Yom HaKnisa. And Rashi continues, Let's say 14th falls out on Erev Shabbos. So then it said again, you don't read on Shabbos. In Kriyas HaMegillah B'Shabbos, there is no reading of the Megillah on Shabbos. Gzeir Hashem Yitzelena Biyado. That's a Gzeir because you might end up carrying the Megillah on Shabbos. That would be a violation of Shabbos. V'yim Tomar Ya'achru HaMukofen Ad Achar Shabbos. Now maybe you'll say that the cities that are walled, they should delay until Sunday. In other words, if the 14th is on Friday, why don't they read on Sunday? Havalei Tezai, and that's not possible because that would already be the 16th. V'yomar Kravalo Yavr. Can't be past the 15th. It's that the 15th is the latest date that you're supposed to read. And the Gemara 
Gemara says, Megillah Nikris B'yod Aleph. Again, it said the Megillah can sometimes be read on the 11th of Adar. Menolan, from where do we know this? So the Gemara says, Menolan, what do you mean from where do we know this? We're going to explain this later on. Chachamim Hekilu Alakfarim. The Chachamim were lenient when it came to the villages. Leos Makadim and Leom Akanisa, that they can read a little earlier. And the Yom Akanisa, as Rashi just said, Kedesha Yizbeku Mayim Umazun Lachem Shabikrachim. In that fashion, they can supply water and food to their brothers. That are in the, that are in the cities. Rashi over here explains kadesha yispeku shu penuyin biyom hapurim. So this is another reason why they do this. This way they're free on the day of Purim. They already heard the Megillah. They're free on the day of Purim. Lahasbik tzarchei suudas Purim levnei hayaros, and they can therefore supply the needed food that's necessary. The supplies that are necessary for the meal on Purim, they can supply that to those who live in the city. And so the Gemara says, Anon And here's what we meant to say. When we said it can be read on the 11th, what we were asking was as follows. Let us see. Everything that's happening over here was all institutions from the Anshei Knesset HaGadola. Rashi over here says, From the fact that the Chachamim said the villages can go earlier, it's a leniency. Clearly the Anshei Knesset HaGadola, they're the ones that instituted this in the days of Mordechai and Esther to, to celebrate Purim and to read the Megillah. They must have said that all these times are good. You have permission to read on all these various days. That we know. Everything was certainly instituted by the Anshei Knesset HaGadola. Because if you think that the Anshei Knesset HaGadola they only said to read on the 14th and the 15th, do you think that the later Rabbonin will come along and uproot a Takana that was made by the Anshei Knesset HaGadol? It can't be that the 11th and the 12th and the 13th were invented in a later time. But tonight we learned in a Mishnah, One Bezin cannot annul the words of a previous Bezin, unless it's greater than that first Bezin in terms of wisdom and in terms of numbers. So El Pshita rather is obvious. Kulu Anshei Knesset HaGadola Takino. Everything must have been instituted by the Anshei Knesset HaGadola. And therefore, the question is, Hecho Remiza. Where is this hinted to in the Psukim? They must have had some kind of hint in the Psukim to this idea. And so the Gemara says, Omar Rav Shemin Barabba, Omar Rav Yochanan, Rav Shemin Barabba says, in the name of Rav Yochanan, Omar Krotz, because the Pasuk says, L'kayim es yimei apurim o'ele bizmanehem. It says, we fulfill these days of Purim in their times. And we learn from that, uh, that from that Pasuk where it says, in their times, zamanim zamanim harbe tiknulem. There are a lot of times that were instituted. In other words, it's possible, again, to read the Megillah on multiple days, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, or the 15th. So the Gemara says, one second, Haimi boy le legufe. The word bizman ehem, that's needed just for the simple understanding of the Pasuk, that in, in all times, for all future times, we're going to fulfill these days of Purim. So how are you learning a drasha from this? So the Gemara says, no, im kein lema zman. If so, it could have just said the word zman, my zman ehem. You don't need to use the language of zman ehem. Zman im tuva means to say, there are many times. So since there are many times, again, that's the hint that we find in the Pasuk. As Rashi over here says, It could have just said, that these days of Purim in the time. You could understand that to mean, in the time that is explained, that is relevant to this particular holiday. But the Gemara says, But still, you still needed to say in plural, because it means, Because it's the fact of the matter is, there are different times. If you're in a walled city, it's different than an unwalled city, the 14th and the 15th. So it does need to say bismanehem. The Pasuk means to say in their proper times, depending on where exactly you live. So the Gemara says, no, im kein leim akras zmanam. If that's all it needed to say, it could have said zmanam. That would have had the same meaning. My zmanehem. What's this language of zmanehem? Shamat mina kulu. So you see from this, all of these different ideas, again, that there are multiple days starting from the 11th. So the Gemara says, ema zmanim tuva. But still, if that's the case, zmanim could be many. Why should we limit it to the 11th? So the Gemara says, Zmanehem dumya de Zmanam. We compare Zmanehem to Zmanom. Ma Zmanom tre, just like Zmanom would have meant two days, meaning the 14th and the 15th. Af Zmanehem tre, so too Zmanehem is a reference to two days. So the Gemara says, one second, that doesn't make sense. Vema tre saru tleser, if it's just two days, that's just the 12th and the 13th. Where do you get the 11th from? 
So the Gemara says, It's like Rav Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says, Yud Gimel Zman Kehilo Lacholhi. The 13th anyway was a day of gathering for everyone. Velot Sarech L'Rabuye, there was no need to include it. He said that in a different context. Hachanami here also, we could say the, the same thing. Yud Gimel Zman Kehilo Lacholhi. Again, the 13th is a day of gathering for everyone. Velot Sarech L'Rabuye, there's no need to include it. And Rashi over here explains, Zman Kehilo Lacholhi. What does it mean? It's a time of gathering for everyone. Hakol Nikhalu Lihinoke Meoyveyim. That was the day that everyone gathered to get revenge from their enemies. Bain Bashushan, Bain Bashama was whether they lived in Shushan, whether they were in other locations. Kamosha Kosov is safer. That's in safer than in the safer in Megillah Sester. Helkach, therefore, Lotzarech, Krala, Rabu, you don't even need a Pasuk to include it. She Roy, Lakriya, you don't need the Pasuk to say that you can read on that day. The Iker Hanes, Bohoya, the main miracle was on that day. It's obvious you can read the Megillah on that day. And the Gemara continues, Vie Moshitsar, Veshivsar. So if you're including uh, two days, why not say the 16th and the 17th? Why do you say specifically the 11th and the 12th? And so the Gemara says, Velo Yavor Ksiv. It says you can't pass. That's what it says in the Pasuk. And again, like we said, like we mentioned earlier, that means to say it is not beyond the 15th of Adar. And the Gemara continues, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni Omar, Omar Kro. And Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni says from a different Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Kayomim Asher Nochu Behem HaYehudim. Like the days that the Jews rested. And the Pasuk there, when it says, Kayomim, like the days, is referring specifically to the days of the 14th and the 15th. But we, but we make a drush as follows, Yomim Kayomim. Days like the days, meaning just like there are two days we're talking about in the Pasuk, there's an additional two days. The Rabos Yud Aleph Yud Beis. That comes to include the 11th and the 12th, again, that you're allowed to read on those days. Again, the Gemara asks, Tracer Utlaser. Maybe it's just the 12th and the 13th. Amr Shimon Bar Yitzchak, Rav Shimon Bar Yitzchak says, Yud Gimel Zman Kehila Lacholhi, Velotzarach L'Rebuya. Again, the 13th was a day of gathering for everyone, therefore it does not need to be included. Again, the Gemara asks, Vema Shitzar Veshivsar. Maybe it means the 16th and the 17th. The Gemara answers again, Velo Yavor Ksiv. It says, Velo Yavor cannot be beyond the 15th. And the Gemara continues, Rav Shmuel, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, my time will lower me bismanehem. So Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, why does he say the drasha kayomim? Why not learn out, not learn out from zmanehem like we learned earlier? So the Gemara says, zman, zmanom, zmanehem, lo mashmali. This idea of darshaning that it could have said zman, it could have said zmanom, it could have said zmanehem, all those are extra. He doesn't darshan those kind of ribuyim. And the Gemara continues, Rav Shemen Barava, my time will lower me kayomim. Why doesn't Rav Shemen Barava say from the word kayomim like Rav Shemuel Bar Nachmeni? Again, kayomim includes an additional two, day, two days. Amar Lach, so he'll say to you, Hahu Ledoros Hu Dechsev. That Pasuk is talking about for all generations. As Rashi over here explains, Ledoros Hu Dechsev, for all generations. Lach Yishai Echlish Nadokra Kayomim. The reason it says like the days, Kilomar Yasu Ledoros, Yodalid V'Tesvav. You should do for all generations, the 14th and the 15th. Kasher Hoya Bimehanes, like it was in the day of the, in the days of the actual miracle. Yamam Asher Nochu Behem, the days which the Jews were able to rest from their enemies. Helkach therefore lo Ikali Rebuya Imehacha Shnayim Achem. You can't include it two other days, the whole point is it's talking about future days, comparing them to the days of the actual miracle. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabba Bar Barachan, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabba Bar Barachan, it says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Zu Divrei Rabbi Akiva Stimta. Our mission is following the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, and it's a star mission, we're not quoting him by name. The Dorish Zman Zmanom Zmanehem. He darshan Zman Zmanom Zmanehem. Again, this idea, you have multiple times you can read the Megillah. But the Chachamim disagree. They say you have to read it in its proper time. And Rashi over here explains, Rabbi Akiva, Hachi Gomir Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Rabbi Yochanan learned this from his Rabbi, the Masnis and Rabbi Akiva Amr, that our Mishnah is actually Rabbi Akiva. Stum to Harbe Stam Mishnah Stam Rabbi Shehain Sosam Rabbi Shehain Divrei Rabbi Akiva. means to say, Many of the Mishnayis that Rabbi didn't put an author is actually Rabbi Akiva. The Yezh Mefarshim, some have a different explanation of this idea of Rabbi Akiva Stumta. Stumta kol astum and Talmid of Hayu means to say all areas where we find Stam anything is usually a student of Rabbi Akiva. Ked Omar Sanhedrin, like it says in Sanhedrin, Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir, Stam Tosef to Rabbi Nechemia, Stam Sifro Rabbi Yehuda, all of these things, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Nechemia, Rabbi Yehuda, they're all Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva. So Stam Mishnah is Rabbi Meir, Stam Tosef to Rabbi Nechemia, Stam Sifro is Rabbi Yehuda, Vakudu Stum Toy, I'll leave it to Rabbi they're all really following Rabbi Akiva. However, Rashi says, in his eyes, it's difficult to explain that way. It's not only talking about Rabbi Akiva, you find this language of stumta used by other Tanoim as well. In any case, the point of the Gemara is to say again that our Mishnah is following Rabbi Akiva's opinion that you can read on all these various days, 11, 12, 13, etc. However, the Chachamim would disagree. They say it has to be read on the 14th. You can't read it on all these different days. 
So the Gemara says, May so we have the following question. Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, Amosai, when is this true? Bizman Shashonim Ketiknon, Yisrael Shuruyan al Mosan. When the years are established and the Jews are sitting on their land, dwelling on their land, meaning in the times of the Beis Hamikdash. Avol Bizman as but nowadays, Holo Mistaklin Ba, and Koronosail Bizman. Since we look to this day, so therefore you have to read it in the proper time. As Rashi over here says, Amosai Hekilu Chacham al Akfarm, when did this leniency on the villages, when did it apply? Bizman Shashonim Ketiknon, Shashonim Misabros al Pibezdin. The point is, that they would make the leap years according to the to the great Sanhedrin, and again they would be Makadish the Chodesh, and they would send out the Bezin would send out messengers. Let people know when Nisan is. And all the holidays were made through these messengers. That was in the times of the Beis Hamikdash. Again, until Pesach, the Shluchin would go out to the edges of Eretz Yisrael. Avol bizman as but nowadays shepasku kolel all of this is done we don't have this anymore the Israel nifredu Jews are all over the place v'lo yagiu shluchei bezin etzlam you don't even have messengers of bezin getting everywhere hakol sofin lemikra megillah everybody looks to mikra megillah meaning from in the far outskirts of where the Jews live they look to when we're reading the megillah to determine the calendar. V'yomrim yom yodalit ba'adar karinan. The assumption they make is that on the 14th of Adar is when we're reading the Megillah. Karinan ha-Megillah. So nishru la'adar tesvav yom. They therefore assume that there's 15 days left in Adar. V'tesvav shal nisan osin Pesach. Then there's 15 more days in, in, in Nisan until Pesach. V'yom taktim kriyasa. Now if you're going to read early, yasu Pesach l'sof shloshim yom. Then what's going to end up happening is again, Pesach, Pesach will make 30 days after when you read the Megillah. Shal kriya. V'nimsu ochlin chametz. B'yom machronim shal Pesach. It's going to come out. They're going to have Pesach the wrong day. They're going to end up eating chametz towards the end of Pesach. So that's why, again, once everyone is spread out, we're no longer in Eretz Yisrael the way we were during the times of the Beis HaMikdosh. It's a problem to read the Megillah on different days. You have to read it on the 14th. And so now the Gemara says, Rabbi Yehuda Aliba Daman. So who is Rabbi Yehuda following in terms of this machlokas you just said between Rabbi Akiva Stimta and the Chacham? Who does, who does Rabbi Yehuda follow? Now if he's following Rabbi Akiva's opinion, Rabbi Akiva was apparently saying even nowadays you have this Takana that you can read earlier. So Ella Lava Liba the Rabbonan. So it must be that rather he's going according to the Rabbonan. And it means to say as follows Uvizman Shashanam Kitiknon Vizral Shurin Alad Mosan Mia Karinon. Even the Rabbonan seemingly agree that in times when, when there is a base on Mikdash and the times when we are in Eretz Yisrael, so then you are allowed to read on the various days. It's only nowadays that the Chachamim say that you can't read on other days besides the 14th. And so the Gemara says, you're right, to Yufta, the Rabbi Yochanan to Yufta. This is indeed a refutation of Rabbi Yochanan, meaning Rabbi Yochanan had said that the Chachamim completely disagree with Rabbi Akiva. That's not really true. The Chachamim agree that when we're in Eretz Yisrael, you could read on all these various days. Just the Chachamim would only disagree, or perhaps Rabbi Yehuda, according to the Chachamim, would only disagree nowadays and say you have to read on the 14th. The Gemara says, Ika de Amri, some have a different version of the above Gemara. Amar Rabbi Barachano, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Barachano says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Zu divrei Rabbi Akiva stimta. Again, our Mishnah follows Rabbi Akiva. Avol Chachamim Amru bizman hazeh, but the Chachamim say nowadays, slightly different version. Ho'olam istaklin, but since we look to the reading of the Megillah for the calendar, and korno sala bizman, you can only read it in the proper time. So according to this version, the Chachamim largely agree with Rabbi Akiva, they just don't agree bizman hazeh. The Gemara says, according to this version, Tanya Nami Hachiv, we have a Brisa that supports this. Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Emasai Bizman Shashanam Ketiknon Vishran Shruin Al Mosam. This is the same Rabbi Yehuda as before, but now it's a support for the idea of Rabbi Barachan in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yehuda says, when is all of this true? When the years are established in the normal fashion, and Klal Yisrael is living in Eretz Yisrael. Avol Bizman Azeb, but nowadays, Holam Mistaklin, but since we look towards the reading of the Megillah to establish the, the calendar, in Koronosa El Bizman, we can only read the Megillah in the proper time on the 14th. And the Gemara continues, Ravashi, Kashalei de Rabbi Yehuda de Rabbi Yehuda. Ravashi had this as a contradiction within Rabbi Yehuda. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video on Daf Pei's Amud Beis.